Hi everybody, Creative Katie Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. Today I have an art journal tutorial. This is part of the napkin journal series. I'm working on my 9 by 12 Canson mixed media journal. I've taken it out of the coils and I'm taping off the edge there to get a straight edge and to keep things out of the coils. So I have chosen to use napkins to break this page and I love this napkin. So I am peeling off the two layers of napkins. This one has some print on it, so it would be interesting to use. Those get used later. And now I'm just going to cut parts of this out. I don't want to put it over the whole background. Now, I've loved this napkin, which is why it's in my stash. But it was the colors that drew me to it. The focal images are a little too small for art journaling pages. And so I've taken this out, in and out, so many times. And I finally decided that I am going to use this and I am going to let this napkin tell, start my color story. If you're not sure what colors go together or look good together, look to the artist of the napkins. Here I'm auditioning some sentiments from my Oh the Possibility pack that's in the works. And I'm tentatively choosing this one. I like the script with the romantic vintage feel of the napkin. Now I'm just cutting more of the napkin and deciding how much of this I want. And I'm reminding myself this is going to be part of the background. Looked like it was a little too much, so I'm cutting some of it off. There is no right or wrong. You make a judgment. And if I decide, oh, I wanted that back, I can glue it back on and layer it up. In fact, by the time when I took this off to get ready to glue it, I ended up putting it in the opposite corners. And I like that look better. So try different things. Once it's cut out, you can flip it around and see. Now, I'll, I didn't get it right to the edge. So either I could wait and I'll just paint that out. Or I can just take little bits of the napkin and cover that up. No problem. Now, the napkin, not only did it start my color story, but it also is giving some incredible texture to the background. Again, playing with that sentiment, seeing where I want to do it. Am I going to go horizontally on this page or am I going to go vertically? At this point, I could go either way. And often when I start, I don't actually know. So now I am thinking, what do I want to do next? I know I want to stencil something on, and I'm thinking about putting modeling paste through the stencil. This is the Garden Gate stencil, and the other one is Brick. It is the, one of their new slimline stencils with the Crafters Workshop. Garden Gate is not new, but it's new to me, and I absolutely Love it. And when I find a good stencil, I tend to use it on more than one project to show you how versatile it is. Because as we spend our money on stencils, we want to know that those stencils have more than one page on in them, that we can use them for a multitude. So here I'm just stenciling a little bit of this brick pattern on, and this changes the feel of the page. And I'm actually really loving it. I like how I'm getting some darker areas of brown and some lighter areas. I'm not being too picky. I'm adding to it the brick pattern. And at this point, I don't know where I'm going with this page. I don't really have an idea, and I don't even have an idea for a focal image. But I like what is happening here. So with this garden gate stencil, I've grabbed some thick gesso and I am just rubbing it through the stencil. 
it's a little bit messy, but I like that look. It adds subtle texture, not quite as much as modeling paste. But it's not precise, so if you want things just so, this might not be the technique for you. And talking about techniques, at the end I will be doing a summary of all the techniques and steps that went into this page. So there we've stamped and we stamped or stenciled with gesso. Now I want to do a little bit more stamping. I want to add a little more interest to the background and I'm using this Tim Holtz set, Papillon. And you know, could you stamp straight, Karen? I, I don't know. So it's kind of off kilter and I didn't like that. So I'm trying to tell myself, oh, it won't matter. Um, you can cover something, you can cover it up later. Um, this is just the background. You probably aren't going to see, but seriously, slow down and uh, and stamp them a little straighter. So I come in with my brick stencil again, and I go right over top of, of that. And that pushes that crooked stamping more into the background. And I like how that brick looks like it's going through the middle. This definitely is going very, very vintagey. So I'm adding some swirls. Another new stencil to me, Capricious. And again, I've used both Capricious and Garden Gate on a previous one, loving both of them. And again, I want to show you that, you know, these have more than one art journal page in them. These will be ones that will get used a lot. Good basic ones. And I'm stenciling with black here. Again, I know I'm going to be putting a wash of color, so this will get pushed back. Liking the look, now I want to start colorizing this. And I'm grabbing Naples Yellow. This Naples Yellow that I'm doing right now is the Artist Loft brand. And then I come in with the Craft or Liquitex brand, which is much darker and much, I prefer it. I'm watering it down a little bit. I don't want this full strength. I don't want it to block everything. So if it gets a little heavy in spaces, I'm grabbing a baby wipe and removing some. I want to see that brick. I want to see that capricious stencil. Now I'm adding the colors and I'm taking the colors, the kind of alizarin crimson from the flower and the turquoise. And I'm just rubbing some of that into the background so it looks like more faded flowers. I'm working quickly. I wanted the paint underneath to be still wet so this we get blending. I also learned very quickly, of course, that blue and the, the red, the turquoise and the alizarin crimson will make purple. And while it wasn't an unpleasant color, purple doesn't fit this page. There is no other purple on this. So I was cautious not to mix the red and the blue together. Thinking about the overall, I'm getting kind of a overworked area there that's kind of dark, but I'm thinking, okay, maybe I can put the sentiment here. Maybe I can do a focal image. Speaking of focal image, here's the inspiration. This is my hellebore or Lenten rose that's blooming, end of January, Vancouver Island. And I grab this printable. Now, I don't know that this is a hellebore or a primrose or some other flower. I don't know, Poppy, but I like the look of it. I like the size of it. And I cut it out and I reorganize the flower to fit my composition. Then I went with that sentiment and it was looking a little small in scale. So I blew it up with my printer. And now you see me bubble cutting, just leaving that little area of white around it I call bubble cutting. And I'm getting rid of the excess white on this because I don't want it to have as much weight as it does with it. If it has more white, white around it, it looks heavier on the page and takes up more of the page. 
So I'm loving the composition here. I am thinking that the white on the sentiment and the white on the flower is just a little too bright white, and I'm probably going to be toning that down. Well, not probably, I will be. I'm grabbing TCW Gel Medium, and I'm gluing down the flowers and the sentiment. So this page in its entirety took me about an hour and a half that was on camera and off to put together. And I tell you that because I don't want you to have unrealistic expectations that you should get a page done in 20 minutes. It takes what it takes. Enjoy the process. The sentiment comes from the Oh, the Possibility sentiment pack that I'm working on. That pos possibility is my word for 2021. And I want to focus on what the possibilities are, not the problems, but what the possibilities are. And I always want to believe that anything's possible. And so I will be doing a lot of quotes that will inspire me, keep me going, keep me on track with my word of the year. Here I am using the floating acrylic technique with an angle brush and black paint to edge the paint, the paper. And I loved how that just really grunged it up. Now remember the gesso that we pushed through the stencil? I wanted to bring that out, but you can't see that pattern. So I've got brown paint on this Ranger blending foam, and I'm just rubbing over that Garden Gate stencil to make that come up. I grab a little bit of black as well, so it's kind of a black and brown, and I just love that detail. There's so much pat pattern and texture on this page. And of course, if I was doing this again, I might do things in a different order. I might put uh, some of that gesso through the stencil in some different places that don't have it now. Here I'm colorizing the sentiment and the flowers I want that white is just too stark and bright for a vintage feel so I grab my angle brush I love using angle brush brushes to paint this one is a smaller angle brush I think it's maybe a quarter inch and I have gesso the alizarin crimson and the naples yellow and I'm just mixing them on the brush and painting the petals of these flowers. And I want to get those variations in tone. Some areas are darker, some areas are lighter, some are more uh, crimson, some are more yellow. But in nature, you get all those variations. And I find when I do this, the faster I go, the less precise I am, the happier I am with the results. In the end, I absolutely adore how these flowers turned out. I know I shouldn't say that about my own work, but I just loved how they came. I, I don't remember where I got this printable from, but I will be going and looking through my files to see if I have a copy of it somewhere else because I love this flower and I could definitely be doing this again. Once that dried, I'm coming in with just the straight up alizarin crimson and my angle brush, and I am shading. I'm using the floating acrylic technique to shade and add lines and interest to these flowers, whatever flower they actually are. They're not hellebores or... Windflowers. 
I used to have a windflower that looked that had petals like that. Maybe that's what it is. Now I'm coming in with some black and adding a little bit more different shading. And you can see the garden gate stencil there. You can see the napkin. You can see the brick, the capricious stencil. All the elements are still visible. But having that solid amount of red there really grounds this page. Now I wanted to paint out the leaves, so I grab the Hooker's Green with the Naples Yellow, and I'm just painting out the leaves. And if you want it, you could just add your own leaves on here as well. Now that green just didn't seem to quite fit. So I grabbed the turquoise and added a little bit of the turquoise to it. And that just made it work better with the colors that were in the page. Now, remember when I colorized this sentiment? That pushed back the black and it wasn't as bold. So what I decided to do was take my fine line applicator and flood the black lettering to get it to be bolder. Now it's shiny when it is going on, but it doesn't stay shiny. But I'm loving that effect because I wanted the always believe part of the sentiment to be a little bit more forward. And then I decided I'm just going to do a lot of dots on the center of this flower. And I love how that turned out. It just really gave it a little bit of dimension and it just was the perfect addition to these flower centers. There I'm shading the leaves with the dark. And I'm not doing a the uh, you know full on floating acrylic. I'm just playing with the color and shading. Now I grab my general's charcoal. This one's the medium, and I'm adding a few lines. The medium is harder, and it doesn't um, break down as much, so it's good for adding lines. Whereas the soft or extra soft you get a lot more smudge with them. And that's what I'm using here. So I'm using both of them to get slightly different effects. These general charcoal pencils have been a great addition to my stash. I've used them so much, they give such great effects. I'm just gonna outline the sentiment. And again, I don't want this to look pristine. This is a vintage page. It's supposed to look old and tattered. Just adding a few more shadows. Here I grab the angle brush again, and I'm just adding a little bit of white highlight to some of these petals and leaves. And as a last step, I'm going to splatter with gold. And I love using my fan brush. This is just thinned gold paint that's in the container. I hope you love this page as much as I do. It is definitely one that I will put on a canvas. So let's go recap. We use napkins to start off the background and set the color story for this piece. We stamped and stenciled to create pattern. And we stenciled 
with thick gesso to add even more texture to this page. We applied a wash of color to most of the page. And then we used a printable and collaged the focal image here. And we painted the focal image to get that painterly effect. And I love how that worked. We applied paint to the textured area to bring it out. We added the sentiment. Well, we chose that when we set up the composition. And then we used the fine line applicator to make it a bolder. We edged the page with black to make it more vintage. And we shaded and highlighted. And then we splattered the whole thing. Thank you so much for watching. Not every page has this many steps. Some can be very simple and be very effective. But I love this one and it was worth every step. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Follow me on Instagram. Bye for now. Go get creative.